honeybees, and other pollinators. What you can do to support them. Presented by the New Jersey Beekeepers Association. Nature is something most people enjoy and appreciate. We love beautiful flowers, and we enjoy fruits and vegetables in our daily diet without thinking too much about it. But where do those flowers, fruits, and vegetables come from? How does it all happen? It starts with pollination, one of nature's wonders. Pollination plays a crucial role in our lives, but it happens almost by accident. It begins with flowers and insects. Flowers make the pollen and nectar that insects need for food. Insects love to drink the sugary sweet nectar made by the flowers. They travel from flower to flower in search of nectar. This activity is called foraging. The plants that pollinators feed from are called forage plants. This lavender is a favorite pollinator forage plant. As pollinators forage to gather nectar from flowers, pollen from the flowers brushes off on their bodies and is transferred from one blossom to another. This simple activity is the mechanism nature uses to begin the complex process that makes flowers, fruits, and vegetables grow. The process is called pollination, and the insects and animals who do this important job are known as pollinators. Bees, flies, beetles, wasps, butterflies, and even hummingbirds and bats, they're all great pollinators, but honeybees account for 80% of all insect pollination. Did you know that honeybees fly over 55,000 miles and visit about 2 million flowers to make one jar of honey? And honeybees are the only insect to provide food that is eaten by people. Pollinators are vitally important. Without them, about 85% of all plants would be unable to produce seeds or fruit. In fact, one out of every three bites of food you eat is there because of pollinators. And pollinators serve not only beekeepers and farmers, they also pollinate the flowers, fruits, and vegetables of home gardeners. Pollinators also support healthy ecosystems that clean the air, stabilize soils, and support other wildlife like resident and migratory birds. But pollinators are in serious trouble. The New Jersey Beekeepers Association is working to increase awareness of this very serious issue and educate people about how they can help. Across the nation, and especially in New Jersey, the increase in development has decreased the natural landscape that provides pollinators with critical food resources. This reduction of food and habitat has drastically reduced pollinator populations. In addition to habitat destruction, factors like widespread use of pesticides and herbicides are also influencing the decline. Lastly, there are simply not enough flowering plants for pollinators to feed or forage from. Although many flowers bloom during the springtime, not as many bloom through summer and fall, and that's when pollinators especially need our help. At that time of year, they need pollen and nectar-rich flowering plants to store food to get them through the winter. Bees need nutrients that are critical for survival, just as people do, to supply food and support their immune systems. Pollen supplies amino acids, vitamins, minerals, fats, and proteins, and bees use it to feed their young. Nectar provides carbohydrates, which the bees transform into honey. If bees don't get the pollen and nectar they need, they can't resist disease, pests, and environmental toxins. They can't feed and support their young. They won't survive the winter. In fact, one-third of New Jersey's honeybees don't survive winter. Populations of butterflies, bumblebees, and other pollinators are also suffering steep declines. The good news is that individuals can make an impact. There are things we can all do to help. Replace a section of lawn with a pollinator-friendly garden that provides a succession of bloom throughout the season. Plants native to the Northeast are especially useful because they have the pollen, nectar, and fragrance characteristics nature uses to attract and support local pollinators. And because they're adapted to our soils and climate, they require little maintenance once established. Native plants support up to 50 times as many varieties of insects and wildlife as non-natives. Shown here are some beautiful native plants which bloom throughout summer and fall. And because they're perennials, they come back year after year. All are great pollinator plants. Hummingbirds especially love the tubular flowers. No, goldenrod's not the one that causes allergies. 
that's ragweed. Milkweeds support many pollinators and other beneficial insects. And did you know that monarch butterflies are almost completely dependent on milkweeds for survival? Ask your local nursery to carry pollinator-friendly native plants you can grow in your pollinator garden. Native perennial plants are a great choice, but here are some other garden favorites that also benefit pollinators. Many can be started by simply scattering seeds on the surface and lightly covering the soil. You can find seeds at your neighborhood nursery or supermarket. Some are even fragrant. Aromatic herbs like basil, mint, oregano, rosemary, and thyme are easy to grow and very attractive to bees and other pollinators. When planning your garden, aim for a succession of bloom that lasts through summer and fall, and you'll be doing something positive to support our pollinators and the environment. So why not landscape with flowering plants that provide high-quality, nectar-rich forage throughout summer and fall? Now let's look at a few other things we can do to protect our honeybees and other pollinators. Limit or eliminate the use of pesticides and herbicides. Although they can be important tools for controlling invasive species, most lawn and garden pest problems can be solved without such chemicals. And keep in mind that even organic-approved insecticides can harm pollinators and other wildlife. If you use chemicals, follow label directions carefully and apply them after sunset, when bees and other pollinators have completed foraging for the day. Remember, chemicals used to control pests and weeds are also harming your pollinators. Even something as simple and inexpensive as supplying clean water will support the bees and pollinators in your environment. Corks, sticks, or pebbles will prevent drowning. Just imagine how honeybees and other pollinators would benefit if many more homes and schools had pollinator gardens. They could be planted by local businesses and on corporate campuses, golf courses, and public parks. And imagine if local government also helped address this issue. Roadways and utility line corridors could be planted with native pollinator-friendly plants. Because native plants are well adapted to our local environment, the need for toxic chemicals, mowing, and watering would be nearly eliminated. Imagine if all New Jersey's roadways looked like this. Between our individual efforts at home, private businesses chipping in, and public entities beautifying our landscape, pollinator gardens can help resurrect our pollinator populations. So remember, replant New Jersey's landscape with pollinator-friendly plants that provide pollen and nectar in summer and fall. Limit or eliminate the use of pesticides and herbicides. Support businesses and influence policymakers at town and state levels to adopt pollinator-friendly land management practices. New Jersey's honeybees and other pollinators desperately need your support and protection. So plan a pollinator garden today. If you see bees, flies, beetles, wasps, and butterflies on your plants and flowers, be proud of yourself. You're helping to support and protect New Jersey's pollinators.